let's talk about Revelation. You have learned so far, if you've been watching the videos, a lot about prophecy and what all these things mean. We've talked about eschatology and what that is. We've talked about differing viewpoints on the return of Christ and the millennial reign. We even talked about what the number 666 means, and hopefully you learned a lot from that. And today, I want to talk to you about the number seven. Now, we've talked about the number of man, the number six, and today I want to talk about the number seven. What's astonishing about the book of Revelation is how many sevens are in this book. And once again, if you read Revelation just with this idea of doom and gloom and that there's going to be a lot of judgment, is God going to judge uh, the evil governments of the world? Is he going to judge sin? Is he going to judge Satan and false religion and all that? Is he going to judge those that are non-believers? Yes. There's no question about that. But as we've learned, Revelation is about Jesus. It's about that he wins. It's about a person, not events. And so it's important for you to see that because in the first chapter, it talks about how Jesus sets the stage. Then he talks to seven churches. And then it describes some scenes in heaven about who Jesus is and how he's worthy and worthy to be worshiped. And then it goes in the middle part of the book and it talks about judgments and things to come and things of that nature. And then in the end, it talks about eternity and heaven and what it's going to be like when we are in heaven with God and, and so forth. So, But what's important for you to know is that Revelation has a huge number of sevens. Now, why is that important? Well, seven is the number of God. It's the number of completion. And it's the number of perfection. So it stands for completeness. And so what God is showing us from Revelation is that he is complete. He is completely in control. He is perfect. He is just. He is righteous. And we can trust him. In spite of what may be going on around us, in spite of tribulation that we may face, God is with us and he's always going to be with us. And I really believe that the number seven is the key that unlocks the meaning in the book of Revelation. The whole book is built on a framework of the number seven. It seems like that this has a lot of figurative uh, sense and significance, and it symbolizes um, some very important things in the book of Revelation as we study it. So, uh, and I'll just give you an example. Um, the 144,000 converts that it talks about um, in Revelation, the saints with God's name written on them, that follows the number of man, the number 666, which talks about being written on non-believers. And so there's a contrast here between the beast, uh, between false religion and the false prophet, and uh, the Antichrist, and God. The bottom line is this, Jesus wins. Let me just give you several pairs of sevens or sets of sevens uh, in the book of Revelation. Uh, there are the seven churches, chapters two and three. We read about uh, the seven churches, and I've been, actually been preaching from that about those seven churches and the message that Jesus gives to them. Once again, this is the number of completeness. He wants every church to follow what he says there. Then there are the seven spirits in Revelation chapter 1. I believe this represent, represents the Holy Spirit of God. Most scholars would admit this. A lot of people believe that it has significance about other things. But most scholars would say this definitely has something to do with the Holy Spirit of God. And so... Uh, these seven spirits showing us that we are not complete apart from the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. Then he talks about the seven lampstands. And we've learned that these seven lampstands are the seven churches. In fact, Jesus himself said that they were in the first part of Revelation. So these seven lampstands. Now, why is that important? The metaphor of light being light in the culture, the church is to be a lampstand. It is to reflect the light of Jesus Christ. So that's incredibly, incredibly important. 
And then there are the seven stars. Um, and we've read that the seven stars are also the seven angels or messengers. The word angel there is uh, uh, angelos, and it means messenger. And we've learned that this means the pastors of the churches. So there are seven churches, seven spirits, seven lampstands or churches, uh, and seven stars. So the number seven is very, very significant. Another uh, section deals with the number seven in a significant way. Let me just go through some of these. There are seven seals in Revelation chapter five. There are seven horns in Revelation chapter five. There are seven angels in Revelation chapter eight. Once again, these are not pastors, but literal angels, messengers from God. Then there are seven trumpets in Revelation chapter eight. There are seven thunders in Revelation chapter 10. There are seven personages in Revelation 12. Let me give you these personages. In other words, they represent, um, I guess this would be what would be called uh, anthropomorphic language, uh, ascribing human features to non-human things. Um, there is the woman in Revelation 12. There is the dragon in Revelation 12. There is the man-child in Revelation 12. There is the uh, archangel Michael in Revelation 12. There's the remnant in Revelation 12. There's the beast from the sea in Revelation 13. And then there's the beast from the earth. So we see these seven different personages and um, they all represent different things. And we'll talk about some of that later. Um, then there are the seven last plagues. Once again, this is part of the judgment of God. Uh, Revelation chapter 15. There are the seven golden bowls in Revelation chapter 15. And then there are the seven kings in Revelation chapter seven, uh, 17. And then it switches and starts talking about some things in heaven, not just God's judgment, not just uh, these complete spiritual things on earth, but what is heaven going to be like? Uh, there are seven new things in the book of Revelation. And I love this. There are seven new things that is described in eternity and uh, what's going to happen for us. Once again, seven stands for, for perfection and completeness. So here they are. There are the new heavens, uh, and, and, uh, and then number two, the new earth. So the new heavens, the new earth, God is going to make all things new. There's the new city in revelation 21. Uh, there are the new nations in revelation 21. There's the new river in revelation 22. There is the new tree in revelation 22. And then there is the new throne in Revelation 22, which is the throne of God, and he is going to be with us forever. Well, remember, in Revelation, Jesus wins. It's about a person, not just events, and Jesus wants us to know that he is complete and perfect and that he does everything right and he is just and holy, and we can trust him. He will always be with us. I hope you'll take encouragement from that and understand that God wants to bless your life uh, when you read and follow what Revelation teaches. And we've learned that uh, keeping it at the center is what this is talking about, keeping the gospel and Jesus at the center of your life. That's what's going to give you a blessing. So I hope you'll do that. God bless you. Until next time, have a great week.